Welcome to session one of the Quality Management Training Program. In this session, we're going to introduce some of the basic ideas of quality management. We'll have a look at what's meant by quality management and also what, con what continuous quality improvement is. We'll have a look at what quality management systems are and also the role and responsibility of the board or management committee or owner, the corporate governance body. Let's start by having a look at what we mean by quality management. Quality management is essentially the action that a service provider takes to make sure that they're always providing the best possible service. They can do that by looking at what they're doing well and where the improvements might be made and then taking action to put that in place and to make sure that the service is working in the best possible way. An important part of quality management is the continuous improvement cycle. This is simply a cycle of review, making improvements and back to review again. So it just involves you in looking at how things are going at the moment, what practices are in place, what results are being achieved, what outcomes are happening. And then from there identifying where improvements could be made. So. A sense of continuous improvement is always looking for where those improvements can be made, planning how to do that, putting that into place, and then reviewing the impact of that again. Quality management is fundamental to a person-centred approach to service provision. It's an essential part of making sure that the outcomes that are being produced are the right outcomes and that you're always making improvements in those outcomes. It's also a mandatory requirement if you're a service provider under the ADAPT quality framework. Let's have a look now at quality management systems. Essentially, a quality management system is just a structured and coordinated approach to managing quality. It's, it's made up of the various processes that a service provider might have in place to manage and monitor and review the quality of the service. So this includes things like the organisation's policies and procedures, feedback and consultation processes that you have with, with service users, compliance with standards obviously, but also things like case planning and review and evaluating outcomes are part of a quality management system. The quality management system is really just a series of processes that are linked to one another, but importantly their purpose is to actually drive improvement. They can be really simple and manual as systems, or they can be large and complex and perhaps electronic. They should be scaled to the size of the service provider. Small organisations are going to have simple systems. Larger organisations will need something a little bit more sophisticated. There are some essential elements for any quality management system, and that's that processes are in place for knowing what good practice is, and this is where the standards come in. They give you the picture of what good practice is when you see it in place. There needs to be processes for making sure that good practice actually happens, that it gets implemented. And this, these are your policies and procedures or practice guides that staff and other people can use to implement good practice. A quality management system needs to have processes also for monitoring, so making sure that the organisation is complying internally, 
that people are following those policies and procedures, but also for monitoring things like progress, how you're going, and what sort of outcomes are being produced. To do that, you need to collect information, you need to have indicators that are going to tell you how well you're going, and you need to actually do an assessment against standards, obviously, to know whether you're complying. A quality management system also has documentation and reporting. So things need to be written down, records need to be kept, and the results of what's happening need to be reported through the organisation so that the, the, the governance body can actually monitor how quality management is, is proceeding in the organisation. Let's have a look now at the corporate governance end of things. The service provider's corporate governance body, the board, the management committee, the owner or directors, are responsible for some specific things when it comes to quality management. They need to make sure that there is a system of some sort in place and that there are internal controls, ways of knowing that um, compliance is happening, that the standards are being met. They need to also monitor the results, so they need to be looking at quality and how things are going and to be making sure that changes are needed, that are needed are made. They also are responsible for making sure that the organisation complies with any reporting or external requirements. Part of this is part of the, the responsibility for risk management and good quality management is also a part of good risk management. In addition to their responsibilities for quality management, the corporate governance body should also be looking at taking the organisation beyond just meeting good practice, but also looking at how to make the service excellent. They have an important responsibility to provide leadership around quality management, to make sure that within the organisation there's a positive attitude and an understanding of what quality improvement is. They need to be providing leadership around policies and procedures, making sure that they've provided guidance to staff about what the expectations are. They need to provide key indicators to have a way of measuring how well the organisation is doing. And they need to provide the leadership around ensuring that records are kept, documentation is provided, and that there are reporting processes that will make sure that the corporate governance body can continue to check and to track what sort of quality improvement is happening.